and welcome to the Knit and Grace podcast. This is episode 13. Welcome or welcome back if you are a returning viewer. If you are new here, my name is Mia and I am the maker behind Knit and Grace. And today I bring you our monthly knitting podcast episode. Um, so this is where I go over everything that I've worked on since the last podcast, what I am currently working on, and then also any future plans. Um, I'm hoping to keep this one a little short today uh, since I do have laundry going and I'm on my lunch break so we'll see how quickly I can get through it today. Um, but I guess we can go ahead and jump right in with what I'm wearing today. And today I am wearing my Building Blocks Drop by Amy Schur. And so it is a slipover. You can see my arms here. Um, I'll also go ahead and insert pictures of me wearing this slipover. And this is a pattern that I made back in the spring. And it was actually featured in my spring making, making plans video. Um, and I made it out of Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool. And so I thought that it would be appropriate to wear it today since we currently are hosting the line brand Fisherman's Wool Make Along over on Instagram. So I figured I would wear it today and also the temperatures have finally dropped so it is proper fall weather and I can do a little bit of layering as well. So in terms of the specifics, I will go ahead and link my, Ra my Ravelry project notes down below. And I'll also link to the episode where I spoke about this as a finished object in case you're not able to use Ravelry and you want to refer back to that episode um, for all of the details on what I did to create this slipover, um, which I don't know, I feel like I need to make another one soon. Actually, I, I want to make another one of Amy's um, slipover patterns soon, uh, inspired by the make along and also by Becky of A Hand Knit Letter, um, who will be making one as part of the making long um, that I'm hosting. But um, long winded as usual explanation as to what I'm wearing. Um, I think today should be a short episode. Uh, we have pretty big projects that were completed this month. And then um, a couple of them I won't go into too, too much detail about because they'll actually be getting their own separate episode. So um, I think that we can jump right in with the finished objects. So the first two finished objects that I have for you are socks, uh, which is funny enough because we are currently in Socktober, although I did not finish these in October, so they are not Socktober socks. Um, I do plan on making a pair of socks this month, so I will talk about that. But the first socks that I have to show you are the Bear Paw Socks by Andrea Mowry of Drea Renee Knits, and this is what they look like. They're fully blocked and everything, which is shocking if you've been here for any amount of time. And you know that I never block my socks and I just put them on the sock blocker so that you all can see them. And then I just put them on my feet. 
but this is a really fun pattern and so you can see it uses single colors and then also a marling of two fingering weight um, strands of yarn and that's what these look like and so I made these for myself um, and the colors that I use the purple is called bitterroot and the orange is called sunstone and I made these for myself um, yeah for two specific reasons one is I actually made a pair of these for my friend Cece of Stitch Witchcraft for her birthday earlier this year and because this pattern uses two fingering weight strands held together I used um, I think a little bit more than half of one skein of one color and a little bit less than half of the second skein of the second color and so I made those with um, using uh, sunstone as my main color and bitterroot as my contrast color and so for these I just alternated because I had more of the bitterroot and less of the sunstone and I used the bitterroot as my main color and the sunstone as my contrast color. Now for these, because I was using just the amount of yarn that I had left, it, it uh, they are sisters, not twins. So you'll see here that I did run out of the sunstone toward the end. So I was able to do the full four rounds of the contrast stripe up at the top for this one. But for this one, I was only able to do two rounds. And then so I just did an extra two rounds of the bitterroot. So they are the same size, they are the same length, um, but it's just that little bit of a difference if you were to look close up uh, because I did run out of the sunstone. So I'm not sure if I mentioned, but this is the Farmer's Daughter uh, Bear Paw Sock, which is the yarn that the pattern calls for. And they are a DK weight sock. They are knit from the toe up, which isn't necessarily my um, most favorite way of constructing socks, but uh, I actually really like the way that Andrea starts these socks. Um, I think it's called the Turkish cast on that she uses for these socks um, as opposed to the Judy's Magic cast on. And I find it to be really simple and really easy. And yeah, I really love these. I made the size women's medium and um, I used a three millimeter needle to make these socks. So a lot of fun there. And again, I link to all my Ravelry project pages below if you want to know specifics on the weight um, of how much yarn I use. But I use like every little last bit of yarn that I had. And then, of course, if Ravelry is not ac accessible to you, you could always reach out to me and I can provide you those numbers. So that is my first finished project for the month. And then we can talk about the second finished project, which is, again, another pair of socks. And let me, I'll put this one first. I had a little bit of dye transfer situation, but funny enough, it wasn't the actual dye from this sock. So this is my second pair of socks for the month. And so these are called the DK Vanilla Socks by Cra the Crazy Sock Lady. And this is what they look like. And I made these for my husband. And so here are the two side by side and so I just added a little bit of a stripe up at the top and then um, a stripe up down at the toe before um, finishing the toe in a contrast color so these socks I knit up the main yarn which is the red yarn is knit picks swish in the color garnet heather and then the white is a skein of Barocco ultra wool DK that I had in my stash. It's like a white, off-white color, so I'm not sure what exact color it is, um, but it is also DK weight, so I use it as the contrast. And the reason I did that is that I am making, um, since Cece and I are going to have matching socks for Rhinebeck, uh, which is coming up in a couple of weeks and we'll, we'll be housemates, I wanted to make a pair of matching socks for our 
partners. And so I made the first one for my husband just because this is the first time I used this sock um, pattern. It is a free sock pattern on Ravelry. And so I could easily measure and make sure that everything worked out well, which it did. And then I'm going to cast on a second pair, which will be my Socktober socks for um, Cece's partner. And so they will have matching socks and then we're gonna have a little bit of a photo shoot with the boys. I'm sure they're not gonna be all about that, but it is what it is. So for these, I made the second size, which is the adult medium. Um, and then I use a three millimeter needle again for these. I didn't knit them two at a time. A few differences, and I can talk about this because it's a free pattern. I think that she has you knit the rib for um, 10 rounds. And I think I did 15 rounds because um, you know, of incorporating the two stripes in there. And so what I did to make sure that I had a clean um, transition with the stripes is I actually, after I did each stripe, I did a um, knit round so that the stripes are nice and crisp. And then at the bottom, you don't really need to worry about that because you are working in the round knit it. And so unfortunately for my husband, one of the socks has a pink toe and that's actually because i which i should have known better um i soaked these i blocked these with another project that i'm going to show you all that i know that that yarn does bleed and i i was like well i'm not using really hot water and um i'm not leaving it in for long i only block for like 20 minutes um i didn't feel like using a color catcher because it's a sock, so I was like, if there is any color transfer, it's not a big deal. So that is why there is one that has a pink toe and one has a white toe, but those are the DK Vanilla Socks by The Crazy Sock Lady. Okay, so now I have two sweaters um, and I am going in order of what how we finished everything in the month. But the next project I'm going to show you, I'm not going to go into too, too much detail because this is the project that's going to get a dedicated making journal. And the reason is, is that it is my tendril by Sophie of the Knit Pearl Girl. And not sure how well you can see here, but this is the shoulder. It is a drop shoulder sweater works from the top down and it has this really nice faux cable detail that's just created using um, twisted stitches. <laughs> that's the word that I'm looking for. And yeah, and this is my official project for the line brand Fisherman's Wool Make Along. And so that is why it's getting its own making journal. And the fun fact about this is that a uh, tendril, I think um, Sophie mentions, is either like the Gaelic word for lightning, um, if, I if I remember correctly, and that's why she named it that. But it is, again, just a drop shoulder, long sleeve sweater, and it has um, several options. I think she's going to work in um, an option for a v-neck, although that's not currently in the pattern that we're testing right now but I know one of the testers created a v-neck so I think she's going to add in that option and there are a couple options for like hems and stuff like that so I'll go into more detail in the making journal for this one this is a test knit and so that making journal I'm planning on publishing it on the release date so you'll be able to know exactly more about how I made this the modifications and all of that but for the very basics of the sweater I did knit it in line brand fisherman's wool in the color oatmeal as my main color. And I held that double with drops kid silk within the color 20, which is called light beige. And so it created a really lovely sweater. And I actually tried it on earlier today and the fit is absolutely phenomenal. And I am really excited to start wearing this one. Um, and it does look like we are gonna get proper fall weather when we're up at Rhinebeck in a couple of weeks. So that will be one of the sweaters that I'm bringing up with me so that I can take finished object uh, pictures of. 
Okay, and now we have the fourth and last finished object for the month of September. However, I do have a fifth finished object that I finished earlier this summer, which the pattern was finally released and I can share with you all. So the last of the finished objects this month uh, is my winter ranunculus. And again, I can't see anything here, so I hope that you all can see this. <laughs> And this is what it looks like. Let's see if I can get the, yeah, you can see the texture there. I am so in love with this sweater. Let's see, yeah, here we go. So you can see the sleeves. I did do the, the balloon sleeve that the pattern calls for with the I-cord edging. Um, and yeah, and it is slightly cropped, not super cropped. Um, so this is my first winter ranunculus. I will definitely not be my last. Um, I was talking with Cece and I was just like, I don't know what it is about this pattern. It just like literally just comes together in no time. Um, I'm pretty sure I knit this one in a week, but it is the ranunculus by Midori Hirose. This is my third time knitting a ranunculus, my first winter ranunculus. So I have um, a short sleeve cream one that is um, using Plotilope and um, I think it's Rowan Kid Silk held double. And so that's kind of like a fall one, um, a nice transitional piece. And then I have my summer one, which I just finished this summer. And now I have a winter one. And this one was completely inspired by Amy's version of this pattern. Um, they also made a pink one out of the same yarn, which is Onarakier Nutidin, although their pink one is uh, a different colorway than this one. Um, but yeah, again, it is, uh, the yarn is Nutidin. It is an unspun yarn. I did hold it double. And this color is the color Antonella, which was from their March 2023 collection. And so I've had this yarn in my stash since March. I did purchase it. And I initially thought of making a completely different pattern, um, Melody Hoffman's tulip sweater. And I still have plans to make that one, not with this, because I've since used the yarn um, and I actually de-stashed my remaining yarn immediately. Um, Mega of Skeins of Dream bought the extra off of me but I had used some of the yarn in my heirloom quilt cardigan and I just loved love love the color and actually knitting with it just get, made me more excited to knit with the color and um, I had remember seeing Amy's version of their pink ranunculus and I was like oh my god I need to make one. Now they did a completely kind of different I think that the, um, they like tapered the sleeves and did ribbing um, versus my sleeves I did the traditional sleeves but let me go ahead and just actually get into the specifics. I have my notes here. So it's the Ranunculus by Midori Hirose. I use Onoraki or Nutidin in the color Antonella. And I did knit off gauge. So each and every one of my Ranunculuses or Ranunculi or however you say the multiple have been knit off gauge. Um, and so I do have detailed notes in my Ravelry project page, which I'll also go through today for you all on how I modify that. So the gauge I got for this one, I used a US 9 or 4.5 millimeter needle as my main needle. Um, I will say I did not swatch. So this was completely just cast it on and let the goddess <laughs> um, guide me, um, which I guess is, is appropriate since I did cast it on on um, the Equinox, which is Maybon. And uh, this was, this will be my entry into Cece's Stitch Witch Craft make along um, that uh, she's hosting this fall. Um, so I did cast it on on September 23rd. It took me about a week to knit, but I cast it on on US 9. I'd initially planned on using US um, 8, but my 8s were all being used. So I kind of just let whatever I had available guide me. Um, so US 9 is 5.5 millimeter needle. 
in terms of the sizing, I did follow the notes for the sixth size of the pattern. And then based on my gauge being off, um, that resulted in a 51 inch bust, which is approximately five inches of positive ease for me. Um, so I knit the yoke and I did the increases as called for for the fifth size or the sixth size, I should say. Um, and then I did knit a little bit of the body just to get some of the body going. And then I went to the sleeves because I wanted the sleeves to sort of help me determine the length of the body. Um, and so for the sleeves, I knit for 14 inches on the sleeves. Oh, and I will say I accidentally knit the sleeves on a size eight which is a four millimeter needle. So again, this is just completely like whatever, because I thought they were size nines, but when I grabbed them and later on put them back in my um, circular case, I realized that they were size eights. So the sleeves are at a little bit of a tighter gauge, but I still do get that balloon. Um, so I knit them straight for 14 inches. And then I did the, I didn't do the, the short row shaping um, that the long sleeve it has like optional short row shaping. I did not do that. I just went ahead and did the I cord bind off and I did my bind off with US 7 or 4.5 millimeter needles. Um, but in terms of the cast on, I just used a German twisted cast on and cast on the number of stitches that calls for in the pattern um, and did all the increasing and everything like that. Then once I finished my sleeves, I went back to my body and so the body I knit for nine and a half inches from the underarm and then I did eight rounds of the twisted rib, which gave me another about inch and a half. So this is a total of 11 inches for the body. So it's a little bit longer than cropped, but a little bit shorter than full length for me. And then I did just, I bound off knit wise on the wrong side. So if I were to flip this in, you could see, let's see, is it going to focus? Oh, it's not wanting to focus, but I bound off knitwise on the wrong side. So it just gave me a nice little pearl ridge all the way around the bottom. So those are my modification, right? Cast on yoke, sleeves, body. Yep, those are all my modifications. Um, I used um, bang on 350 grams. It was 350.1 grams of yarn to knit this one. And if I hadn't already mentioned it, I did hold the yarn double um, when I was making this up. And I am so excited to have a winter ronunculus. And now I'm like thinking about all the outfit possibilities um, that I can wear it with. Okay, so the last finished object that I have to share with you all is the Coracle Cowl by Isolde Teague. And this is what it looks like. Um, it has, a, it's a bandana cowl, so it has a point. Um, and if it looks like it blends in with my sweater, that is correct, because this is also a line brand Fisherman's Wool. And this is in the color brown heather, which is also the same color that I'm wearing today. So this was a preview knit for Isolde that I spoke about back in the summer, but I wasn't able to share with you all. And I am really excited that the weather has finally turned and I can start wearing this cowl. Um, the construction is super, super fun. So I'm just gonna show you here. Um, and this is a paid for pattern, so I'm not gonna go into like super specifics, but it is a basket weave pattern. And so you actually knit the entire thing flat. And so you start off with this section right here. You, you cast on and you start with just this basket weave section. Um, and then you keep increasing and increasing until you get to the end, at which point you work some ribbing. And then you will notice that there's a slight difference in my ribbing and that's because I had two different dye lots of the fisherman's wool. Um, but thankfully I was able to make it to the ribbing before <laughs> I needed to use the second dye lot, which is the same one as my 
my sweater so it's at the ribbing so it's it is a it is a noticeable but it's not like super in your face that you know it doesn't look weird because it's just the ribbing um and then you seam up the short ends in the back and so there's like a diagram that shows you how to do all the seaming and everything and then you just put it on over your neck which i'm not going to do right now because you know hair um i will insert a picture of um the finished cowl on a hanger i haven't been able to take um worn finished objects pictures of it yet because again i knit this in june so it was really hot and i was not gonna wear a cowl um it was just not gonna happen um so i will hopefully be able to take some finished objects pictures of it worn when we're up in the Catskills um this month but um again I use Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool in the color brown heather it used less than one skein I think it used like um like 0.8 of a skein so however many grams that is and I used a US 4 or 3.5 millimeter needle to make the cowl um I think it came out just tiny bit larger than um the dimensions because the pattern does use dk weight yarn but i find fisherman's wool can sort of be knit at a tighter gauge or a looser gauge depending on the look and feel that you want for it um so that is my last finished object for the month and um as you can tell there is a lot of lion brand fisherman's wool in this episode which i'll remind you about the make along um later on in the video so now we have our works in progress and I only have one to show you today. Um, I am still working on my heirloom quilt cardigan, but I have gone ahead and laid out all of my squares in the way that I want to seam them. And I plan on seaming them this weekend and, um, you know, working on the sleeves and hem and neckband so that I can have it done in time for Rhinebeck. So I didn't want to disturb anything. There's literally, other than laying out the squares in the way that I want to seam them there's been no progress from last month and um so if you want to go back to last month's episode I'll go ahead and link it up above so that you can check out my squares um because I did go through all of my finished squares um last month um so that one will be showing up in two weeks um when you all see my Rhinebeck making journal so in terms of projects that I have to share with you and this project right now is a little wily because I've got a few things going but it is my stick season sweater which is a test knit for Rebecca Clow of the Crea Bea and so just it was in my project bag um I'm holding it in this project bag that I made a couple years ago and I will as always link the project bag pattern that I use for my bags um, so this is what it looks like so last we talked I think I had just finished the back piece and so I've now finished the front I've done the collar as well and then I've started my first sleeve and so I'll get in here so you guys can see the detail there so it is a Gansey style sweater and it has this knit pearl textured detail at the top and so the reason why this sweater is kind of in the state that it is is because I am using um the yarn that I'm using is Primrose Yarn Co. Rowan DK and the color Wanderlust Wanderlust and um it is a hand dyed yarn and there's definitely visible heathering and so i am doing helical knitting for the body so you can see all of my strings there um i'm doing helical knitting for the body and this sweater is meant to be a long sleeve slightly cropped body sweater and because of that I decided to start on the sleeves because I wanted to make sure like once I started the body here I've just started the third and fourth 
skeins of yarn that I have and I had six total and I'm playing yarn chicken with this pattern. So what I did was then I switched over to the sleeve so I could weigh the yarn that I use for the sleeve. Hopefully it's not more than one skein and then I will know that I'm okay to make the second sleeve because I'd rather make the sleeves to the size that I want and then have the body a little bit more cropped than have cropped sleeves. And so that is what I'm doing here. So I did start the sleeve decreases. It, it does have a tapered sleeve. Um, and so I'm just about there with the first sleeve in terms of finishing, or no, I'm halfway there in terms of finishing the decreases. And then I'll work the second sleeve. And then from there, I can work the body to the suggested length um, and then decide if I wanna, you know, sort of finish it there or keep going if I have enough yarn left over. So that is that. Um, for this project, I am making the fifth size, which is a 42 inch bust, which will give me two inches of positive ease, which is within, I think um, it calls for two to four or two to six inches of positive ease. Um, so I chose the lower end of positive ease and my main needle that I'm using for the project that I got gauge on is, um, a US 7 or 4.5 for the stockinette portion. I did have to go down a needle size, um, to US 6 or 4 millimeter for the textured portion, um, in order to get the right gauge. So I am using sort of two different gauge needles for that. And so this test is due on November 1st, so it will be finished by the time I publish the next podcast episode, so you'll be able to see it as a finished object uh, next month. And so now we get to the acquisitions portion, and I am happy to say that once again, I have no acquisitions this month. Um, I have stuck to my plan of not buying yarn until Rhinebeck. Um, so I'm really excited about that and in two weeks I'm going to Rhinebeck and I get to buy all the yarn. <laughs> Although I do go to Rhinebeck with a plan um, so I don't just like go into it willy nilly and I will have a Rhinebeck vlog. Um, so I will discuss my plans during the vlog and so what I do is I'll, I'm going to do the same format as I did last year. Um, so for Rhinebeck weekend on that Saturday, I'm going to publish my making journal. So that's going to be me making my outfit for the weekend. And then the following weekend, I'm going to publish a vlog and acquisitions episode. So I'll have vlog of the weekend and also all of the things that I bought that weekend in that one episode, which will be the week after Rhinebeck. And so that's when you will be able to see if I stuck to my budget, if I stuck to my plans, and also all of the fun that we are going to get up to all weekend long. So of course that brings me to my October making plans and um, they are not ambitious at all because we have Rhinebeck coming up and quite honestly I think I have been knitting so much that I'm kind of just like oh my god is the end in sight. Um, I definitely will be slowing down a bit in the month of November, although I do have two gift knits that I want to make that month. But in terms of knits for me, I'll probably be slowing down quite a bit in the month of November. So for my October making plans, um, I plan on finishing both of the sweaters, so the heirloom quilt cardigan and the stick season. And then I plan on making another pair of socks, um, which will be those DK vanilla socks um, for Cece's partner. Uh, so really excited about that. So hopefully, um, I haven't even started to think about like what my Rhinebeck weekend knitting is gonna be. I have to start thinking about that soon because you know, we're leaving in less than two weeks, but we will, we'll make it happen, right? We'll make it happen. And so with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and update you on the numbers for the month. And I am looking at my notebook, if you're ever wondering where I'm looking at. Um, and so I am so excited. So um, if you are new here at the beginning of the year, I set a goal to work down my stash by uh, 
2023 grams of yarn so 2023 grams of yarn um i went on a bit of a spending buying bender at the beginning of the year and then had to quickly modify my goal um just at that point um you know at that point i think like in june-ish i said okay i just want to at least have like some kind of have brought in less yarn for the year than I have in previous years past. Um, and then toward the end of the summer, kind of saw that maybe I might be able to hit a net zero. And I think that that's still totally on track. So that's my new goal for the year. It's just gonna be to be a net zero at the end of the year. And then we will see how I do. Um, and so that's what this number section is. So. Um, first, I'll start with my September numbers. So for my in number, so that's the total amount that's either coming in or going out via um, D stash. I do have negative numbers because I D stashed some yarn. So for my in numbers, that is going to be negative 260 grams, which equals negative 1430 yards for the month. In terms of total out, that is the amount of yarn that I am actually knitting up in the month. And so this month I knit 1177 grams, so 1177 1, grams of yarn. And um, that equals 4,690 yards that I knit in this month. And so I should caveat that by saying that I don't count projects until I've actually finished them. So that doesn't necessarily mean that I've actually knit that much in one month. Um, I just happened to finish one longer term project, which was the, the tendril. And then, you know, I had a couple quick projects. The coracle um, cowl numbers were already counted later, um, earlier in the summer. I just hadn't shared that cowl with you guys yet. So that one did not add to the numbers. So the total for the month are a negative 1,437 grams. So that's how much yarn was out, which is an equal to a negative 6,120 yards of yarn. And so my year-to-date totals, um, year-to-date in stayed the same from last month, which is 7,479 grams or 26,908 yards. Um, or no, actually that would have gone down because of the negative 260 grams. But okay, in terms of the total amount out, that is going to be 7,320 grams or 27,048 yards. So that brings me to a total. The total is a little different because of sometimes if I'm bringing in more fingering weight or worsted weight or whatever it might be. So the total weight difference is I'm up 159 grams in terms of the total amount of weight that is in my stash however i've actually am in the negative yardage wise so i'm in the negative 140 yards for the year so i definitely think i can still hit my net neutral uh, or net zero i should say um and yeah i'm like super excited and we'll see what the rest of the year brings um i do have obviously my acquisitions planned for rhinebeck but i do have a few bigger knits that are planned later this year um and yeah and it is official that my husband and i will be moving at the, well we already knew we were gonna break our lease but we actually um, and I guess this is a little bit of a life update, so if you're okay with that. Um, my husband and I will be breaking our lease, or not breaking our lease, but we will not be renewing our lease at the end of the term. And we will actually be moving back into my parents' house. 
in 2024. Um, and so my parents have a multifamily house. So it is an apartment. It's not like we're going to be living with my parents. Um, and it's actually where I lived for many years and we started our living together journey in that apartment. Um, and then we moved out of the apartment maybe like two months before we got married, um, to our first sort of married apartment, which was, um, one apartment to go before this one. Um, but the reason why it's a big deal is we were definitely going to downsize and we were planning on downsizing. Um, we weren't planning on downsizing this much. However, um, you know, just with whatever's going on, I'm not going to get into details, but it's, um, a good situation for us uh, we'll be able to save up money for a down payment to eventually buy a house um, so it is going to be a long short-term move so we'll probably be there for about three years is the plan unless anything else changes and um, the reason why it's a big deal is because currently we we are an apartment It's technically an apartment but it's a townhouse um, and so our townhouse, our main living area is 1,200 square feet, and we do have a basement, um, which is fully renovated, or it's a fully finished basement, although we don't, we do have like a gym down there and my husband's office down there, but it is really primarily for storage still and our laundry. So we're moving from 1,200 square feet plus basement storage to a 600 square foot apartment. So, um, it's going to be a really big change. Um, again, the nice thing is, is that we've lived there before. We know what to do. We know like the intricacies we've, you know, it'll kind of, it, it's, it'll be familiar to us, but of course we have so much more stuff that now I have to get rid of. So we're in the process of starting to purge and all of that. And then we also have two cats that we didn't have when we were first living together. So it's gonna be a little tight to two adult humans and two little teeny tiny cats um, in a 600 square foot apartment. But um, I'm really excited for this next phase in our marriage and in our lives which will ultimately help us get to the ultimate stage that we want to be at, which is home ownership um, within the next three years. So really excited about that. So that's a little bit of a, a life update um, here at the end of the podcast. Um, and yeah, with that, I will go ahead and bid you adieu. <laughs> um, and let you all go for the day. It is a bit of a shorter episode today. Um, so again, be on the lookout for the Ryan Beck content, which will, again, will be in two and three weeks. And then I do have a making journal, which will be the last week of the month as well. So uh, you'll get quite a few videos. I think you'll get like four videos four weeks of videos in a row there toward the end because then of course I have my usual podcast episode that goes up right after that um and so I hope that you are enjoying the start of the fall season if you're in the northern hemisphere the start of the spring if you're in the southern hemisphere um I think we have a little bit of a rain spell this weekend so hopefully the weather will clear up, but it looks like we are going to get proper fall weather for Rhinebeck, so I'm so excited about that. Um, but I hope that you're all taking care of yourselves. Uh, be sure to take care of yourself and each other, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.